we're we're gonna walk it. We'll be up in front there, and we'll be able to light it out of the side of the camera. So. Yeah. And that's recording everything even as we're speaking. Oh no! <laughs> so watch what something we say. <laughs>
respect for this family and God's house, the congregation is asked to please make sure that all electronic devices have been turned off. Congregation, please rise. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. <clears throat> then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. <clears throat> Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus answered them, Do not grumble among yourselves. 
No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not as the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise Thanks. Praise Thanks. Praise God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope, and join in confessing our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from that he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
guests, extended family of Kalinskis, fellow redeemed saints of God in Christ Jesus, beloved grandchildren, great grandchildren. And to you, dear Alice, My beloved and faithful sister in Christ. God's grace, His mercy and peace be yours from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't know what the exact date was that you called me, Doug. My phone doesn't go back that far as far as recent calls. But if my memory serves me correctly, it was about a week and a half or two before Thanksgiving. The news that was shared with me prompted me to begin making plans for a trip to beautiful Grand Island so I could go on a visit with you, Alice, and your beloved husband, Ernie. The need and the timing for me to make that trip became increasingly urgent many of you know, the forecast for that Thanksgiving week was horrible. And so what did I do? Monday, the day it was coming, I hopped in the car. I came unannounced with Amy, my wife, so we can come and spend as much time as I could possibly do with earning kick me out. <laughs> but during the course of our conversation, he mentioned to me something that he might not get the opportunity to finish what I have affectionately called over the years the Holinsky Scroll Saw Gift. <laughs> Driving back home, I could not help but think of all those beloved gifts that have begun to accumulate on the plate rail above our cabinets in the kitchen. And I'm sure, as was testified by the raise of hands earlier, that there are many more of those gifts in the houses family members, <coughs> of children, of friends. But there was one particular piece that came to mind. And it was this one. 2017, the last one that Ernie made for me. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. As we heard in the entrance song, the conclusion of that verse is, for a steadfast love endures forever. And for the vast majority and sadly an increasing amount of people who have no affiliation with the Christian church, it's hard for them to fathom or perhaps even think that it is inconceivable that earning or any follower of Christ, for that matter, could utter those words. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. <clears throat> Especially at a time when those who belong to Christ endure physical ailments, things that would either limit or prohibit them entirely from doing those things that they used to do with such ease when they were healthy. 
and especially today. And before us, the coldness of death shakes us to our core, reminding us that we are but mortal. Still, none of these things that Ernie endured stopped him from giving thanks to the Lord for his goodness toward him. You see, God blessed his servant Ernie with many abilities and gifts that I know that he openly thanked God for. Most of which I'm going to keep tucked away in this small little mind of mine and file it in the Flinsky personal conversations folder. A couple of those things, though, I do wish to share with you. The first one being that Ernie thanked God for giving him an amazing patience. He had to. Anybody that sits there and does this type of work has to have some sort of patience. But he also thanked God for that talent. You see, through that, God blessed Ernie with the opportunity to spread the good news of God's Word. That very same Word which he heard regularly in God's house, and yes, even listened at home on his computer. He would take that Word, transforming that, and transferring that message onto wood, using his own hands. Every time he did so, every plaque that he gifted to a family member or friends, Ernie was confessing Jesus in his life as the very Son of God, who came to preach that good news of the gospel promise into the hearts and the lives of sinners of every type and persuasion throughout his earthly ministry. The same Jesus came to be the perfect atoning sacrifice, not only for sinners that make up Christ's church, and it is full of sinners, but for sinners like Ernie, sinners like you here today, a whole world, a whole mess of sinners. Sinners that deserve nothing but God's eternal wrath and condemnation. Not surprisingly, Ernie's Savior, Jesus, was known to be a master woodworker himself, the son of a carpenter. Jesus confirmed that he was indeed the Savior of the world by first allowing himself to be placed as an infant in a manger at his birth. And then later transferred that blessed message that he was the savior of the world unto a much different piece of wood shaped as a cross. <coughs> he confirmed it by allowing his hands and his feet to be nailed to it, thereby sacrificially shedding his holy, innocent, and precious blood for lost and condemned sinners like Ernie and Hugh. In me. For this precious gift of a Savior, Ernie was right to say, We'll give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. The second thing that Ernie often thanked God for was the gift of healing. Ernie confessed and knew Christ to be his great physician of both soul and body. Had it not been for Jesus, the good shepherd, laying down his life for the sheep, Ernie would have perished eternally. If it had not been for Jesus, who had healed during his time on this earth many frail and diseased bodies through his 
during his earthly life, there would have been no one else that Ernie could have turned to in prayer and sought to be delivered from his bodily afflictions for the precious gift of healing Ernie received. He was right to say, we'll give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. But as we come together in this day, are we not tempted by the devil to see this casket before us in which Ernie lies <coughs> and called to question the goodness of God? Are we not tempted to say like Martha to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Death overwhelms us, takes us by surprise, as it did many of us Saturday. And to the human eye, death seems to have the final say when it snatches our loved ones from our lives. But there is good news. Even in the face of death, when it comes to the Christian, death does not have the last word. For the one who closes their eyes this side of heaven falls asleep in Jesus. St. Paul reminds us, as he did the Thessalonica Christians, as we heard in the epistle, we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with, with him, excuse me, those who have fallen asleep. Because Jesus died and rose victoriously from the grave that blessed Easter morning, those who belong to Christ are not and cannot be held in the bonds of death. The Easter hymn puts it so vividly. Christ is arisen, alleluia. Rejoice and praise Him. Alleluia. For our Redeemer burst from the tomb, even death, even from death, dispelling its gloom. Let us sing praise to Him with endless joy. Death's fearful sting He has come to destroy. Our sin forgiving. Alleluia. Jesus is living. Alleluia. Death is the only thing that is regarded as the last and greatest enemy. But yet death is the door through which we enter as Christians, the courts of heaven. Remember that it is Jesus himself who is the door of the sheep. By him the sheep are called and they know his voice. They follow him. These same sheep go out and find in Christ green pasture and still waters where they are refreshed. For the precious gift of eternal life promised through Jesus Christ alone, in which Ernie, even now, experiences, we are right to say, we'll give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. In 2008, my first Christmas here at St. John's, I was blessed to receive another one of the Holinsky scroll art pieces. And it is one that Ernie said, it doesn't have a Bible verse, but it means a lot. Jesus is the reason for the season. Jesus is the reason for the season. What a wonderful season to be called home to our Lord and Savior. You see, many people throughout the world 
especially in these latter days, when anything that reminds us of Jesus to be removed at this time of year. Even some who claim to be Christian only see Jesus as a reason for the season. If Jesus is not the reason for the season, then the question must be asked. Just who then are you looking for to come and save you from your sins? The Bible clearly tells us that the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said to him, Do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Furthermore, the Apostle Peter, filled by the Holy Spirit, goes on to say, There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. The reason for this season is centered upon the fact that God sent His beloved Son into the flesh to be your Redeemer, to be your Savior from sin. If it were not for Christ's incarnation, the promise and certainty of your salvation would be entirely lost. To not have this Jesus at Christmas is to have an entirely and much different reason for the season. For the precious gift of Jesus Christ, born to be our Savior, our deliverer from sin, from death, and from hell, we are right to say, we'll give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. <coughs> Finally, I want to shift gears for just a moment. Because I think that oftentimes we overlook names. Names are significant. They have meaning. Much like Joseph was given a name that he was to call this child born of his wife Mary, the name Jesus means the Lord saves. He came to save Mary, Joseph, you and I. And so also there's significance in other names as well. I can take, can help but take notice of Ernie's name. Ernest means serious. And when it came to his faith, it was all of that no more. He was serious. I need to talk about this Jesus who knew that he wasn't a perfect human being, but still loved him immensely. So much so that he laid down his life for us. And another name that I found to be quite interesting is Ernie's middle name. And I made mature God, but forgive me. But he will I never heard Ernie say his middle name. And perhaps there was reason for that. But after I went and Googled things, I pray that it is a name that will become part of your vocabulary when you leave this place today. You see, the name Bofumio is a Czech name by origin. It means God's peace. The Slavic version means favored by God. 
Ernie was blessed to receive the name of Jesus in holy baptism. It was there that God claimed him as his beloved child. We are reminded of the significance of what it means to have that name of the triune God placed upon us and called his child every time we have the remembrance of baptism before or at the beginning funeral service. It is why we place the pall upon the casket. Noting that Ernie was not covered with his own righteousness, but the righteousness of Christ which covered all of his sins. To be united with Christ in holy baptism is to be united into his death, but that assurance that we will also be united with him in life, the resurrection of all flesh. As a result, we have what Ernie has now. Bohemian. God's peace. May this peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding bring you much joy and comfort this Christmas. Knowing that Ernie and those who die in the Lord now live forever in eternity with him. For all God's great goodness and mercy, it is fitting for us to say this day, we'll give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Continue with the singing of Hymn 386. <laughs>
Almighty God, you knit your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your life, your peace. Lord, your mercy. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Grant that all who have been nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son may be raised to immortality and incorruption, to be seated with him at your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Give to the family of Ernie and to all who mourn comfort in their grief and assure confidence in your loving care that, casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Give courage and faith to the bereaved that within the communion of your church they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the assurance of a holy and certain hope, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life, with those they love who have departed in the faith. Lord, in your mercy. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Our thanks for Ernie and for all the blessings you bestowed on him in this earthly life. Bring us at last to our heavenly home, that with him we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to life. We give you thanks that by his death, he destroyed the power of death. And by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also. And that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, and the light to reveal you to the nations, and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. Whoever lives and believes in me will never die. The family has asked me to welcome each of you following this morning's service, this afternoon's service, to join them back in the fellowship hall for a uh, light luncheon uh, meal. Uh, Hopefully at that time you will have some time to reminisce and give uh, thanks to God for, for Ernie and the many blessings that he bestows, has bestowed upon each of us. Uh, following the recessional 
family, the immediate family will go out to the funeral coach, the congregation may remain in here and the family will come back and join them. Uh, at this time we'll also have a, a meal prayer so that we will come together. The Lord be with you. Lord God, our shepherd, gather the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy and bring them home. Comfort us with the certain hope of the resurrection to everlasting life and a joyful reunion with those we love who have died in the faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of food that you have provided and for all those who lay, whose labor brings your blessings to our tables. We pray that this meal, by this meal we may be strengthened for your service and together await with joy the feast you have prepared for all the faithful in your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Amen. The congregation is asked to remain standing for the closing.